from the floor to almost the ceiling was piles and piles of black bags dissolving with cat food in it. It had rotting food and cat litter, waste and um, faeces and all sorts, and I was actually living in all that. We're in the hallway at the moment, and as you can see, it's got a bit quite cluttered. Everything in here is, as you can see, shopping. I've got cakes, I've got biscuits. These are for visitors. More cakes. When I have people come round, I always like to give them a biscuit or a cake when we have a cup of coffee you know, and we're having a chat. Air fresheners, I love my air fresheners. I just love the smell of the orange air freshener. With just custard the cat sharing Sally's two-bed flat, there's plenty of storage space. There's actually two bedrooms, which are down there. The reason why I can't get down to the back there to sort out any of my other hoarding is because obviously you can see there's a fridge freezer parked in the way. Got a living room, and to the left, there's a kitchen. Up here, straight ahead, as you can see, is the toilet, and then round the corner here is my bathroom. Because I'm not in the bedroom at the moment, my bed's still in here. I didn't realise I even had this many of these cakes, to be honest. My bed's a bit untidy at the moment, but because I can't get into the kitchen, I've done food in here, like sandwiches, which I'm a big fan of anyway. And they're still sitting here. Beetroot. It was smoky bacon, crisps and beetroot. And then what I did notice, which I forgot I put there, you look, a loaf of bread. This has actually gone mouldy. I don't understand why that happens, to be honest, so... I don't think it's that I can't throw stuff away. It's I can't be bothered to. Living alone and unable to work, hoarding started taking over her life. I think it's when I first moved in on my own, you know. I mean, my place used to get untidy anyway, like everybody's does. And then all of a sudden I thought I need to put the bin out and then I looked and was thinking, oh my gosh, look what's happened. I class myself as a hoarder in the sense of rubbish hoarder. This isn't the first time Sally's hoarding has spiralled out of control. I was living in pure rubbish, and I mean pure rubbish. You couldn't see my bed. From the floor to almost the ceiling was piles and piles of black bags dissolving with cat food in it. It had rotting food and cat litter, waste and... Um, faeces and all sorts, and I was actually living in all that. And on top of that, we also had carpet bugs, so they were crawling all over me in the bed. I couldn't get to the toilet in time, so I had to climb over all the rubbish. I ended up starting urinating bottles. And then, obviously, I'd have the cats, you know, sleeping around me as well, and then they would end up messing in certain corners of the bedroom. You know, once you started going down that road, if you couldn't stop to get it all sorted on your own, it just created um, a hell, basically, to live in. Conditions got so bad that Sally had to accept an intervention by the council or face eviction. I was scared because I knew that I was waiting for that knock on the door or a letter through my door to say um, people are being complaining. It took six days to clear the flat and specialist counselling was put in place to support her. After we did the clean, I had 18 months aftercare, so they came on a regular basis. Um, and then last year, it all finished, and then it just all crept up on me again. Once you're a hoarder, you're always a hoarder. It's like once you're an alcoholic, once you're a drug addict, you can be clean for five, ten years, and then something happens. It's the same with hoardism of any form. Sally has raised the alarm and called in some emergency support to help her with her hoard. Extreme cleaners Kaz and T have known Sally since her first intervention two years ago. I'm looking forward to seeing Sally. I haven't seen her in a while, so um, it'd be nice to see her, catch up with her, have a cup of tea. From what I can tell, everything should be OK. I do ask every now and then, how's the flat, how's things going? So she always says that there's a bit of shopping in the hallway. Hopefully, everything is smelling of roses. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's 
stranger. Yeah. Oh, hello, darling. Oh. What's going on, Sally? Oh, it is getting close. Step over there. Yeah, I know. I've got to sort stuff out. So what's going on? Let me have a look at the kitchen. Go on, then. Sally! Yes, I know. Sally! I know. Hold on, let me have a look. Sally! Yeah? Are you shitting me right now? No. Oh, Sally. The battle with hoarding can be a lifelong struggle. Like any addiction, a relapse can occur at any time. There's plates of cat food. I know what happened was I bought a bean. Well, I got that all sorted. That bin's there, has been there since just before Christmas. Is that a brand new bin? Right, yeah, but it's just I've been dealing with a lot of other stuff and I wanted to sort that out myself. Rubbish hoarder Sally is having an emergency clean of her flat less than two years after the council last intervened. Do you know what? I'm, I'm upset with you. Well, I There's know. no excuse because you, you're yeah. just a phone call away. I know it's bad in there and I should have asked you, but to be honest, that's the only second time it's ever happened. As we stepped out the lift, we could smell the smell. flat, Sally. Do you know, that hasn't been like that for a long time. Yeah, but as soon as it started to go like that, Sal, that's when you should have called yeah. us. Sally's kitchen has got so bad, it's classed as a biohazard. Dealing with it is an emergency. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff with my dad, because Dad's had You never once to... mentioned the kitchen was like that, Sally. Because the kitchen wasn't that bad, the... though, a couple of weeks back. No, but That's only just... happened in the last it's X not, amount of weeks. Not, if it doesn't look well, how we left it... To, if you can't get to your sink, it's an issue. No, if it's, okay, if, if it's not how we left your counter, it's an issue. Yeah, I know that. Oh, I know that. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I mean, I know that. But you never said a thing. No, I didn't say so that. you kept us in the dark. It yes. seems as though you've lied to us, Sal, because you've not mentioned it. Well, no, I've mentioned it. Yeah, I wasn't lying, right. but I hadn't mentioned it yet. Yeah. Let's just go and get our blues. Okay. Let's just get our blues and crack on. She didn't want to disappoint us, I suppose, and she didn't want to um, upset us or feel like she's let us down in any way. And we don't feel let down because she's a compulsive hoarder and it is a mental health condition. What we're upset about is the fact that the help is there for yeah. her and she well, yeah. hasn't accepted it. Oh, do you want any fix for your nose for the smell? Sally's one of our clients that we've had for such a long time, and she's really tried. But sometimes she needs that little extra help. I don't know I make excuses, and I shouldn't. Maggots there, Sally. Yeah. There's a big group of maggots right there. Oh, those are little compared to what's been in. There's some carpet bugs in there as well, floating around. Sally, why can't I lift this up here? Because obviously gravy. I can't believe I've effed up again. <laughs> you got everything? Yep. Right, thank you. When I look in there, I see um, relief, you know, that I've uh, got it, well, we've got it rid of. There's a, a wave of calmness over me, and now all the rubbish is gone. The kitchen may be safe again, but Sally will have to pay to have the rest of her flat cleared and made safe before the risk of eviction is removed. Sally is a very warm, loving, caring person, and this is her only vice, is, is that she's a compulsive hoarder. She just needs a, a good support network and she's yeah. not really getting that from anybody else at the moment like she was before. Yeah. So if the support network's in place and people are checking on her, um, I think that will give her more of an excuse to try and keep the flat tidy knowing she's going to have visitors. After four days hard work and an estimated tonne of the hoard removed, Sally's flat is habitable again. absolutely wonderful. It 
it's really hard to describe so much so that I was actually crying today when we were you know talking about it because I've been wanting to be in this bedroom since I moved in I'm glad after 13 years of now wanting to be in here I'm, I'm here how Sally can help herself is just set goals every day you know small things like making sure that the catalyst is clean getting rid of her daily rubbish so that's all I can encourage Sally to do is to keep a daily routine of small jobs. Our advice is everything in your home has a home. Home, yeah. So if you put it back in its home, it will stay there and you won't lose anything and it will stay tidy. There is a bit of concern when people talk, um, are we going to go back to my old habits? I believe once you're a hoarder, you're always a hoarder, but you have to fight. I think it could happen again if she doesn't have the right support yeah. network around her. No, but I know she enjoys the fact that we're around. Yeah. And she sees us as mates. We're like family now. 